Well, thank you so much, everybody, for attending. I uh, really appreciate it. So my name is Dr. Sinski. I think I've met some of you. Uh, I am the coordinator of employer relations here in the office. I also do some work with graduate school advising. So if anyone has any questions, I'll probably plug that at the end. But today, uh, Dave, uh, Dr. Dave Beasley from UNLV's Graduate College is here to talk a little bit about graduate school at UNLV and just basically a run out of everything you could possibly ever need to know about graduate school. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it over to him and we're gonna get started. And also um, everybody, if you didn't already, please fill out the short attendance form that I'm gonna be putting into the chat, just really quick, just basically just kind of signing in so that we have our attendance on our record. Um, so go ahead and Dave, Dave, get started once you're ready. Right, thanks so much, Zach. Welcome everybody, I'm glad you're here with us. As Zach said, I'm Dr. Dave Beasley. I'm the Recruitment and Admissions Specialist here at the UNLV Graduate College. Uh, so I've got uh, sort of a, a brief presentation to go over with you all about uh, grad school at UNLV. And we'll talk a little bit about grad school more broadly um, as well. And then um, we'll have plenty of time for Q&A. So I'm happy to answer any questions you have, things like that. And I'll also mention that here at the UNLV Grad College, we routinely have um, at grad School 101 and paying for grad school and grad school applications 201 where we cover different aspects of the graduate school application process. So let me go ahead and share my screen here and uh, and we'll get started with the presentation. Okay, can everybody see that okay? Excellent. Okay, so um, what, what we've got here today is just sort of a, a quick rundown um, of some of the basics about grad school and about grad school at UNLV, some of our requirements and things like that. And like I said, we'll have plenty of time to go over any questions that you all may have. So I want to start by just talking about some of the general overall benefits of graduate and professional degrees. And we'll make a quick distinction here at the top between graduate and professional degrees. And it's really just a matter of emphasis, right? Graduate degrees are more research focused. They're in traditional quote unquote academic subjects, you know, English, chemistry, uh, physics, sociology, things like that. Uh, whereas professional degrees, that's, you know, uh, law school, medical school, um, you know, business school, things like that. Things that are a little bit more career oriented. Um, of course, if you do a graduate degree, you get some career training. If you do a professional degree, you get some research skills. It's just really a matter of emphasis here. So um, no matter which of those you do though, you're gonna have increased employment opportunities and a lower overall unemployment rate. So if you look at how unemployment breaks down by education level, the more education you have, the lower the overall unemployment rate tends to be. Also, you're just gonna be eligible for more jobs. So when you graduate from Nevada State with your bachelor's degree, that's gonna open up a whole world of jobs to you that are, um, that are not available to you now because they require a bachelor's degree. Graduate school does the exact same thing, right? Um, and so it opens up a, a whole, uh, um, a whole other level of jobs that are available to you and that tend to pay a little bit more. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, they, the graduate or professional degree really does help you stand out from the crowd. So only 13.1% of folks have a graduate or professional degree. You can compare that to, to about one in three have a bachelor's degree, right? So between 33 and 35% of the population, depending on, um, you know, depending on what surveys you look at has a bachelor's degree. So you go from one in three to one in seven. You're a whole lot rarer and employers are willing to pay more for that as a result. Also, just the very fact that you have a graduate degree indicates that you have certain transferable success skills that employers are looking for. That means you're gonna have some research skills, self-discipline, leadership, communication, perseverance, right? Just good old fashioned stick-to-itiveness, right? That you know how to start a big project and complete it and complete it at a high level. It's obviously a great opportunity for you to make an impact. New knowledge changes the world every day. If the last few months have taught us nothing, it's, they've taught us that, right? And this is really across the board, whether you're interested in a career in medicine, uh, you know, so the STEM fields, uh, humanities, whatever it is, right? Finally, it's a chance for you to take control of your future. A graduate degree is going to make you more marketable and sought after by employers. They're also portable degrees. So um, if you want to stay here in Las Vegas, right, you all know, know that in Vegas, we're a growing, bustling city, right? So we've got lots of businesses that are going to need lots of folks, right? And everything from, you know, administrator, uh, from, uh, you know, administrators to accountants to scientists to engineers, you know, across a wide array of fields here. But if you want to move someplace else, you know, if you want to go to the East Coast, go to the Midwest, um, you know, uh, wherever it is that you want to go, right, move up to the Pacific Northwest, wherever, they're going to need folks with advanced degrees there, right? They're going to need 
you know, uh, folks with MBAs. They're gonna, um, you know, they're gonna need teachers. They're gonna need engineers. They're even gonna need literary critics like myself. Okay, like they're gonna need all of those things. So it's really a chance for you to pick where you wanna live and pick the kind of career that you wanna have. Because again, you know, a lot of times folks with graduate degrees, they field multiple job opportunities when they come out of graduate school. How great is that, right? To get to pick between multiple employers. Let's talk a little bit about money and specifically, can I interest anyone in more of it? Um, so if you're anything like me, you remember every single person that you ever met while you were in high school telling you how important it was to study really hard so that you could get into a good college because you were going to make so much more money with a bachelor's degree than you were with a master's, or excuse me, with, with a high school diploma. And you know what? Those folks were right, okay? So if you adjust for all kinds of different variables, the average bachelor's degree recipient makes about $670,000 um, more than the average high school diploma recipient, okay? So there it is right there, right? You do make more money. What they didn't tell us, or at least what they didn't tell me, was that you can almost double that money again by going back to graduate school, right? By doing a couple of more years, right? So the average lifetime earnings between those with graduate degrees and those with bachelor's degrees is, a, is about $620,000 worth of difference. So that's a significant sum of money. Now, maybe you're like, Dave, I don't think in big numbers that way. Maybe you're mid-career, right? Maybe you, you, you sort of came back to school a little bit later, you've already worked some, or maybe you just wanna know what does that look like in terms of median annual earnings, right? Well, for those with a bachelor's degree, it's about $68,000 a year. For those with a master's, it's 80,000. For those with a doctoral degree, it's 98,000. And those with a professional degree, it's 98,500. So you can see there are real differences there. Even that first step up, just going from bachelor's to master's is $12,000 a year on average difference. That's, that's a lot, right? That's $1,000 a month. Now, I don't know about you all, but if anybody wants to take $1,000 and put it in my paycheck every month. I'm totally fine with that. They want to pay me an extra thousand dollars. I'm on board with it. Where do I sign up for it, right? Um, and of course, that could be even higher in certain fields. So what is it that makes UNLV special? Because all that's going to be true pretty much no matter where you go, right? You go to a good, reputable, legitimate graduate, uh, you know, graduate program, that's going to be true. So why should you do it at UNLV? Well, one thing I'll say is you're already here. Um, you know, you're already in town, right? You won't, uh, you just, you just be driving a little further uh, to campus. But um, we do have, we do have more than just, you know, uh, locality going for us, a lot more, in fact, right? We have the prestigious R1 ranking from the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education. That puts us in the top 3% of research universities in the country. That is the absolute gold standard for research universities. Um, what that means is that there's very high research activity happening on our campus. That's the kind of thing that makes a potential employer, especially in a research field, look up and, and you know, sit up and take notice with. We have more than 175 graduate degree and certificate programs, including more than 40 doctoral and professional programs here. So there's lots for you to pick from, pretty much no matter what you're interested in doing, you're gonna have the chance to do it here at UNLV. Um, you know, I just realized I need to update this slide. We are no longer among the most diverse universities in the country. We are the most diverse university in the country, according to US News and World Report. We were number two last year. We are back at number one this year. Um, so, you know, a lot of places will talk a big game about diversity. Uh, UNLV, just like at Nevada State, we live it each and every single day, right? It's one of the great things about um, all of the Nevada uh, um, institutions of higher education is we're all really, really diverse, but UNLV is number one uh, on that front. We are in the top 10% nationwide in social mobility, according to the College Net Social Mobility Index. So what that means is that folks that come to UNLV make a lot more money when they finish here than they were making when they come here. So you're really able to greatly increase the material circumstances of your life. Um, we are, if anybody's active duty military, part of a military family, reservist, uh, a veteran, um, you know, National Guard, anything like that, we're ranked the number seven military friendly large school in the United States. We also have the community engagement classification. So if you're interested in working here in the community with Southern Nevada, maybe as a physical therapist, an occupational therapist, as a sociologist, uh, maybe a, a counselor, anything like that, really anything that involves a community here at UNLV, we're a big part of it. 
um, because we have the community engagement classification that comes to us from the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. And there's only 119 universities in the country that have that distinction. So you take that R1 ranking, you take that community engagement classification, and you find a, a um, you know, what you've really got is an amazing university that's right here in your own backyard. Right, so um, so lots of opportunities here for our graduate students. Now, you're going to be able to learn from nationally and internationally recognized faculty and highly ranked programs. Uh, we had two different faculty groups um, who published in um, Nature, which is one of the most prestigious journals in all of academia. Two different faculty groups published articles in that journal this year. Um, we have 26 top 100 programs here at UNLV. Uh, these include a top 60 doctor of physical therapy program, a top 100 part-time MBA program. We have a top 100 English PhD program. We have a top 30 criminology and criminal justice PhD program. We have highly ranked programs in creative writing. Uh, we also have um, a top 10 music program, top 10 in the country. Can I interest anyone in that? We have a um, we have the number two uh, hotel college in the United States here at UNLV. It's top five in the world. Can I interest anybody in that, right? We have some really great programs here at UNLV. We also, because of that community engagement classification, because of the work that we do here uh, in sort of the greater Las Vegas, uh, Las Vegas area, we have a lot of our programs provide opportunities for you to partner or intern with local employers. And a lot of our students, that's how they get their first job right out the door. Um, once they finish up their grad degree here, they've already got a relationship with somebody who's you know, ready to hire them. You're going to have the opportunity to work and study in cutting edge labs, research centers, and libraries. We have amazing lab space. Um, we've, got this, um, we've got this science and engineering building on campus. It's got wet labs on one side, dry labs on the other. It's absolutely stunning. It's got all the latest and greatest technology. Um, you know, in terms of research centers, right before the pandemic uh, happened, we opened, we had just opened the Black Fire Innovation Center. It's a public-private partnership between UNLV and Caesars Entertainment. That gives our hospitality students a chance to try out things in a real-world environment. That place is wild. It's so cool. We have amazing libraries here on campus. We have several of them. We have our main library, which is LEAD Library. We also have an architecture studies library. We have a teaching and learning library. We have a music library. Um, between those four libraries, uh, we have over a million print volumes. We have access to another million volumes through uh, our online collections. We also have subscriptions to hundreds of academic databases, which will give you access to over 80,000 periodicals, scholarly journals, publications, proceedings, whatever kind of research you need to do here at UNLV, you're gonna have the opportunity to do it. And you're gonna have the materials that you need to do it at the very highest level. Now, um, you may be thinking, okay, Dave, this all sounds really great, but you know, like I'm trying to put myself through school, I'm trying to work for a living here. Um, when am I supposed to do all this amazing stuff? So a lot of our programs um, are, you know, afternoon, evening only, some of them are online, some of them are hybrid. Our MBA program, for example, they don't have a single course that starts before 5.30 in the evening. So there's, uh, there's all kinds of opportunities for you there as well. We'll talk about this a little bit more as we go, but there are chances for you to gain hands-on experience through graduate assistantships. Uh, if you're not familiar with graduate assistantships, this is a pretty good gig. It's where we pay you to go to school. You did hear that correctly. We will pay you to go to school. Um, so that's a pretty good deal, right? And then finally, you're going to have the chance to develop some really long lasting relationships with faculty and classmates. That's the kind of thing that you can do a lot of places. I know, I know that's a fair point, but I do think there's something special that happens here at UNLV. You know, I came in here a decade ago to do my doctorate in English, and I still keep up with all of those folks. Um, you know, our MBA program, those folks get together all the time, um, they go into business together. Um, I, I, I hear occasionally that uh, even people meet their spouses here at grad college. Now, I cannot guarantee you a spouse, okay? We cannot make that guarantee, but, um, but it just shows you the kinds of things that happen here at UNLV. So um, I want you all to know, you know that this really is a special place. Um, I've got three different degrees from three different schools. I love all three of my schools, but I only chose to stay at one, and it was UNLV. So um, let's talk a little bit about how to select a program because you know that 175 programs thing is kind of good news, bad news, right? I mean, the good news is we got lots of stuff. The bad news is that can seem overwhelming, right? 
So if you're not sure what you'd like to study, if you're just sort of thinking about this graduate school thing and you just sort of want to know what your options are, right? I would recommend to start with the outcome. What career do you want? What kind of degree do you need for that career, right? Certain, certain careers require very specific degrees, right? If you want to be a professor of English, you better go get a PhD in English, right? Um, you know, other things don't, uh, don't have quite as many requirements. You know, I was talking to somebody earlier today who was looking at, um, you know, doing some, uh, you know, going into nonprofit work. And we talked about, well, maybe you could do some accounting. Maybe you could do an MBA. Maybe you could do a master of public administration with a concentration in nonprofit management, right? There's lots of options for you. So again, I would just encourage you to think about what kind of career you want and then to do a little bit of research to find out what kind of, degree, of degrees you might need for that. I would also encourage you to think beyond your bachelor's degree. A lot of people go through and do graduate studies in, uh, in the same field they did their bachelor's degree. That's totally fine, right? I did that, all my degrees are in English. Other people change gears entirely. So don't feel like you're, you're totally limited by your bachelor's degree. Um, you know, sometimes if you wanna go from a non-STEM program into a STEM program, you might have to take some extra courses, but you don't necessarily have to have a degree in anything um, to go to graduate school, so long as you have a degree, right? So long as you have a bachelor's. Other things, you know, we can, we can help you get, get hooked up with your prereq courses and things like that. I encourage you also to research various fields, reach out to professionals in those fields, you know, like think about the fields that complement your skill sets. Think about who you might know that works in those fields, ask them if you can have a few minutes of their time. You can always schedule a meeting with us um, here at the UNLV Grad College. You can email us at gradrecruitment at unlv.edu or call us at 702-895-4543. Um, if you wanna set up a meeting with me, that's totally fine. Just put that in the email. If you want anybody but me, that's fine too. Just put that in the email <laughs> and they'll um, and we'll get you all hooked up. Um, so when it comes time to, to narrow down your programs of interest, once you've sort of figured out what you think you might want to do, it's time to start reviewing the program websites for application requirements and deadlines. So unlike undergrad, where it's like one big deadline, different programs have different deadlines. So for example, we have programs that are admitting for fall 2022. Some of those programs have deadlines as early as December 1st of this year. So just a couple of months. Other programs accept applications all the way until August 1st. So it's really important to know what your deadlines are. It's also really important to understand your program specific requirements. Um, so I'll go over um, the basic requirements that the grad college has in just a couple of minutes, but programs have additional requirements. Um, it's always a good idea to reach out to a program coordinator. So each and every one of our programs here at UNLV has a coordinator. They're a great resource for program-specific inquiries. If you're not sure where to find that information, if you're having trouble tracking it down, give us a call, shoot us an email. We'll be happy to get you hooked up with that person. And then you can always learn about degree requirements in the graduate catalogs. Uh, our graduate catalog here is, um, you know, is, is updated each year. Also be aware of your timeline to degree. If it's a master's, it's probably two to three years if you go full-time, uh, you know, two years in most cases, if you go full-time, maybe three if you go part-time. Doctoral degrees can take a little bit longer, anywhere from four to six, really depends on whether or not you already have a master's, depends on how quickly you can get that dissertation done. Are you going full-time? Are you going part-time? Different considerations to keep in mind here. So I wanna let you know as well that we have a lot of resources for you once you're here as a graduate student, right? So we wanna support you every step of the way. On the recruitment team, we wanna support you with events like this, letting you know about the different, um, you know, about the different application uh, deadlines, letting you know about the different program requirements, stuff like that. But then once you're here, we have the, uh, the Graduate College Professional Development Academy or the Grad Academy as we call it, right? So they offer, I've just picked a few things here. Free academic support certifications. They offer um, you know, opportunities to, to do some networking across campus with the Grad Rebel Ambassador Program. Grad Rebel Writing Bootcamp is a great event for when it comes time to do your, uh, your thesis, your dissertation, your professional paper, your capstone, things like that. Then they also have the Postgraduate Career Pathways Program, which helps prepare people for a variety of career options when they're ready to graduate. All this stuff is free, by the way. Um, the Grad Rebel Writing Bootcamp has a nominal fee. I think, I think it's $100, but if you come to all the events, we give you your money back. Um, that Postgraduate Career Pathways Program, that's in addition 
to the career services office that we have at UNLV. And being a Nevada State grad, you all will be able to kind of double up on those career services because you'll be able to work with the Nevada State Career Services Office. You'll be able to work with the UNLV Career Services Office. You'll be able to work with our Postgraduate Career Pathways Program. Um, if you're in our hospitality college, they have their own career services office. If you're in our business school, they have your own career services office. What I'm saying to you here is you will get a job. Um, and it will be a good one, okay? Um, so uh, we also have um, the Graduate and Professional Student Association here, right? Our GPSA, right? Um, this serves all of our currently enrolled UNLV graduate and professional students. Membership is automatic, and we encourage you to use the GPSA as a resource. So in addition to all that Grad Academy stuff I was just talking about, you'll also have access to GPSA. They maintain study spaces for our grad students here on campus that are grad student only. So it's not, you know, it's not quite as many people all over the place. One of them is in our main library. The other one's right here in the grad college. They work to promote and represent the interest of our grad and professional students across campus. They support different academic endeavors, including, you know, conference funding, things like that. They also, and I think this is, I think this is where they, they really stand out. They're stellar across the board, but I think this is where they really stand out, which is providing an environment that's conducive to student scholarship and research. There's just a lot of support uh, here through GPSA. They also offer free certificates, career support workshops and training. So you're gonna have so many options available to you here. So here are the grad college admission requirements. This is what we require, and then you can reach out to your programs to find more information, right? So we need a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited institution. Nevada State College most assuredly counts as one of those, so you're in good shape there. We're looking for a 2.75 overall GPA or a 3.0 GPA over the course of your last 60 credits. We know sometimes your freshman year can be a little bumpy. We know that starting out in college can be tough. Maybe life happens. Maybe it's more work than you thought it was going to be. Maybe you, um, you know, maybe you end up sort of biting off more than you can chew. Maybe you're like me and you just party too much as a freshman. So either way, um, we do have that sort of freshman forgiveness program there. We will need transcripts from each post-secondary institution you attended. If you attended a school outside of the United States, we will need a foreign credential evaluation. Then there are additional factors which are determined by your program. So some programs require a GRE or a GMAT test. Others require a writing sample or a personal statement. They might require a portfolio, letters of recommendation, things like this. So it's really important to go over those program websites for all of that information and to reach out to those graduate coordinators with questions about it. I want to talk a little bit about what UNLV might cost you. So this is based on numbers from last year and based on nine credits, which is full-time enrollment for graduate students at UNLV. Um, so as you all know, because you're at Nevada State, right, um, you know, tuition in, in Nevada is, is, I mean, it's certainly not free, but it's not as expensive as it is in a lot of other states. So we're looking at about $6,500 um, for, uh, for, for, uh, for the year at nine credits. Now, this is obviously varies, you know, you might take 12 credits, you might take six, right? Um, you might need to purchase insurance from us, you might not. You may, you may be in a program with some differential fees, but just generally speaking, it's about $6,500. If you're out of state, I don't think anybody here would be, but if you are, you'd be at about 22,000. Now, at the same time, I also understand that like $6,500 is not a small amount of money, okay? I certainly couldn't write a check for that right now. Um, so I wanna let you know about some other things that we have, right? So we have these graduate assistantships that I mentioned earlier. We have over a thousand of them here at UNLV for our 5,000 graduate professional students. So about one in five of our students is funded through a graduate assistantship. Um, and your odds are actually a little bit better than that because a number of our students in the education college and in the business school don't apply for GAs. They're already working full time. But we have over $21 million in annual funding for those 1,000 GA positions. We have, uh, you get an annual stipend between $11,250 and $20,750 a year. We have, a, you get full tuition coverage for the semesters that you're appointed to GA. If anybody was out of state, it would waive the out of state tuition. You get a registration fee reduction. We will pay for all of your health insurance. That's new this year. We've been sort of helping out where we could before, but now we are able to pay for all of the health insurance. 
Um, we get, uh, you also get some summer tuition benefits, bookstore discounts, access to emergency loans, and more. Now, in addition to that $21 million in annual funding for over 1,000 GA positions, we have $5.7 million in annual funding for scholarships, fellowships, and awards for our graduate students. So there's a lot of money here for you at UNLV. That's almost $27 million right there in funding for graduate students. So there's money here. Um, when it comes time for you to apply, you'll do so in the Grad Rebel Gateway. You'll upload your documents there. Once you uh, give it some personal information and tell it the program you're interested in, it'll then auto-populate the rest of your application. That's also where you'll apply for those graduate assistantship positions, and I would encourage you to apply for GAs when you're applying to your programs. Um, you want to make sure that you get that uh, that, that, that those folks know uh, that you are interested in one of those graduate assistantships, if in fact you are. There is an application fee, it's $60 for, uh, for domestic applicants, it's 95 for international applicants, that fee is non-refundable. And then you submit your application and do the hardest part of all, which is wait. So sort of a final to-do list here, um, as we uh, as we sort of wrap up this part of it and get to your questions. Um, so. You can always schedule a meeting with a member of our recruitment and admissions team. Uh, so, um, so I really wanna encourage you all to do that. And I will send this presentation over to Zach so he can distribute it to people who are here. Um, but uh, that email address is on the very front slide. It's gradrecruitment at unlv.edu. Um, we can help you determine which program is right for you, but maybe you already know. If that's the case, you know, you definitely want to go over those admission requirements, deadlines, and reach out to that program coordinator. It's really, really important that you speak with the program coordinator to let them know that you're interested in their program. Um, then you apply to the graduate college and su submit any additional materials to the program or to us, and then just sort of hang out and wait, um, which I said earlier is the hardest part, and it certainly was for me. So we're a small but mighty team here at the UNLV Grad College. Um, there's actually eight of us now. Um, I've got to I've got to add our newest member of the team onto this slide. Um, but we've got uh, four full-time um, academic faculty, or excuse me, administrative faculty here. Um, and then we've got four recruitment GAs that work with us. Um, so if you want to know more about what life is like as a GA, I can certainly share my experiences with you, but uh, Pemba, Kaya, Ken, and our newest member of the team parties can tell you far more, far better than I can and far more recently, uh, sort of what that's like these days, right? It's been a, it's been a minute since I was a graduate assistant. Um, so that's sort of it for our end of things here, except to say um, that there's our email address again and our phone number. We're happy to have you come by and join us one day if you'd like to. Uh, we can show you around a little bit, sit down, go over some program uh, requirements and things like that with you. If you do want to set something like that up, please do email us or call us ahead of time. Um, like I said earlier, we're a small but mighty team. So we're happy to set up a time to meet with you, but it's better to make an appointment. And you know, this doesn't have to be done weeks in advance or anything. Most of the time, if you call us in the morning, we can probably get you in that afternoon, certainly by the next day. Um, but we just, we have a lot of events and I'd hate for you to come all the way over to campus and not be able to meet with anybody because we were all busy. So give us a call or shoot us an email ahead of time um, and we'll be happy to set something up with you. We can also do it on Zoom or WebEx if you'd like to meet that way or we can do it over the phone, whatever works for you. We're in the office Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So that's it sort of for the formal presentation uh, part on my end. So I'm going to quit sharing my screen now and turn things back over to Zach and take any questions that you all may have about UNLV or our programs or just the graduate school application process in general. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, you can either unmute yourself or you can go ahead and put it in the chat, whatever works for you. Any questions at all about anything having to do with grad school, um, anything having to do with UNLV? Hi, Zachary. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Uh, did you have a question? Sure. Uh, my question was, I'm looking to um, obtain master's into doctorate for English. Um, and I was wondering how long per se would it be if I was full time into um, not necessarily the master's, but uh, potentially the uh, PhD for English. What that time frame might look like, just like as an estimate. Sure. So that's 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 a great question. 
Um, so a couple of years ago, it would have been impossible to answer because there was no way to enter with just a bachelor's degree, but now there is in the English program. So um, I would say your timeline to degree is probably four to five years if you went full time. Right. Um, a lot of that would depend on how quickly you write you, you would write your dissertation. Now, would you be looking for literature or for creative writing? It would be for literature. For literature, okay. Yeah, I would say probably four to five years um, if you were coming in without the master's. Um, and um, I would also say that the English department does have a lot of GA positions. So I would encourage you to apply for one of those as well. That makes it a little bit easier to go full time because you get, um, you'd work 20 hours a week. So all the GA positions at UNLV, and this is pretty standard across schools, are 20 hours a week. So, um, so you might teach a class and then uh, that would be, that might be 10 hours and then be in the writing center 10 hours. You might teach two classes. It would really depend. Um, but, but, you know, so you'd probably be looking at like five to six semesters of coursework, then um, a semester to prepare for your comprehensive exams. And that might be in that sixth semester and then a year to two years to write your dissertation. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Beasley. That's great information. I appreciate it. Of course. And, um, and like I said, I, I did my doctorate in English here. So if you ever want to set up a, a time to chat one on one, we can talk more about the English department and get you hooked up with, um, with some of the folks over there. I'd be happy to do that for you, Gabriella. Most definitely. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Oh, I think uh, Anna has her hand raised. Go ahead, Anna. Hi, um, I have kind of like the same question, but it was more towards like the master's uh, for psychology. So, um, Anna, were you looking at the like the like one of the counseling degrees, like clinical mental health counseling or couple and family therapy? Um, so I know that you guys have a lot of programs in psychology, so I still don't know like which program I want to go to. Um, but I, I wanted to ask if like I can actually like, I guess like if you guys could help me like to see which ones I like better just to have like, like to see which ones I like, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll put our email address here in the chat. You can send us an email and we can set up a time to go over that with you. So we don't really have um, just a straight uh, master's in psychology here at UNLV. We do have two doctoral programs in psychology. One of them is in um, uh, brain science, which is more of sort of like a re uh, more of um, like a, a laboratory research focused degree, I guess, for lack of a better term. And then we have clinical psychology, which is more about like clinical practice. Those are both doctoral programs, but then we do have like clinical mental health counseling and we do have um, couple and family therapy. Those are masters. So you're probably looking at like three years or so to get through those, um, probably four to five years for the, the doctoral uh, and psychology ones. And I will say, um, not to discourage anybody, but just to be an honest broker, the clinical psychology PhD program is probably the hardest program we have to get into. They get about, uh, they get about 200 applications per year. And I think this year they're going to take seven people. Um, so it's really tough. I don't say that to, to be discouraging, but just to let you know that you've really got to put together a top level application package. That said, um, we do have other programs that could get you out and into private counseling practice um, a little bit more quickly and without having to do quite so much preparation for the application. But I'm going to put the email address here in the chat. And this is for anybody who wants to set up a meeting. Um, by all means, reach out to us and we can sit down and talk with you more about it. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I, you know, I, I share your sort of uh, re reaction there. I, I found out that about some of the programs I was interested in, but you know, there's nothing wrong with having good taste. I was also gonna say on the topic of scheduling a meeting, we are doing some individual consultations later this semester for you with UNLV grad college. So you'll be able to schedule one-on-one um, -on -one meetings with someone, I think you said it was going to be Lori. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think Lori is going to handle that. Yes. Yeah, so if you really don't want to meet with me, that's your chance because I'm out of town that week. Um, so um, so you can get signed right up there. But yeah, we will have some individual consultations, and I, I want to say that's Tuesday, the 26th, is when we have that scheduled for. 
Um, but again, if that doesn't work for your schedule or if anybody wants to meet with me, sh shoot us an email. If you wanted to go to me, put my name somewhere in it and, um, and we'll totally you know, get you set up with somebody. But yes, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that, Zach, because yeah, we will absolutely do that. And that'll be with, um, with Lori Filippo and maybe, maybe one of our grad recruitment uh, GAs as well. Awesome. And yes, you are right. It is October 26th. And if anyone's interested in that, you can find it on Handshake. So the same way that you uh, looked for this. So just find October 26th, the events, um, you can find it there. So if there any other questions, feel free to drop it in the chat if you're, if you're shy and you don't want to. I, I know I'm the same way with Zoom. It's nerve wracking. So either way, up to you, you can raise your hand. You can just unmute yourself, whatever you'd like to do. Anyone at all? Um, I actually had a question about... Um one of the requirements so as far as the recommend uh, letters of recommendation go are there any requirements of it should be from uh only like faculty or um from like a school setting or could we pick um let's say like old employ uh former employers to be our letters of recommendation so that's that's a great question it the answer is um is that it depends um, so what i mean by that is First of all, let me just say in general, yeah, you're generally looking for like employers or professors, right? Somebody who's been in a position to evaluate your work, right? So you don't want like your mom or your dad or your brother or your sister. I don't think any of you all would do that, but you'd be amazed at some of the stuff, you know, you get as many applications as we do here at UNLV. You see some kind of wild stuff sometimes. So I just want to say that it needs to be somebody who's been in a position to evaluate you in some way, shape or form and preferably is not related to you via blood. Um, so we'll knock that out. But um, if it's more of a research focused graduate degree, I would say yes to professors pretty much exclusively for that. If it's more of a professional degree or even like a business degree, something like that, that's a little bit more career focused. Um, it could be professors or it could be employers and it might be a mix of the two. The other thing I would say is to be sure that you look to see what the program is looking for. Most programs just say, give us letters of recommendation. Some programs are really specific though. So for example, our master of social work program, one from a professor, one from somebody who's in a, one from a supervisor, preferably in social work or a related field. And then the third one is just kind of a wild card. So it could be like a professor or a supervisor. But Christina, I think you're definitely on the right track. The other thing I would say to that is if you let us know which program you're interested in, we can we can give you the uh, graduate coordinator information. Um, and so the way they, the way things work here at UNLV and each school does it a little bit differently, but we make sure your application is complete here at the grad college. We don't actually review it though, uh, in terms of like content, things like that. We just make sure you meet our requirements and have everything you're supposed to have. The program actually makes the decision about whether or not to admit you. So in that case, I always say to folks with questions about letters of recommendation, talk to your graduate coordinator. Um, if, if they are cool with the people you are submitting as your, recommend, as your recommenders, we will be cool with it. Um, so it's really up to them. Okay, so I was gonna, um, that being said then, um, if I'm looking at possibly applying for the like couple and family therapy mm -hmm. degree, uh, what would be, um, I guess what would be, who would be the best to, I guess what would be the email for me to um, contact? Sure, so that's gonna be, I'm putting it in the chat right now. That's gonna be Dr. Sarah Jordan. Um, and I'm putting her name and email address in the chat right there. Dr. Jordan is incredibly responsive via email. So if you send her an email and ask maybe to set up a time to chat, I'm sure she'll get right back to you. And um, yeah, that's, um, yeah, that program is, um, you know, and I'll say for, because we got a couple people here interested in these kinds of programs. Um, a lot of what you read about the grad school application process is going to be a little different for you all. Because um, generally speaking with personal statements, we say, hey, don't tell them your life story. They don't really care who you are. They just want to know sort of, you know, they don't really care about your background. They want to know who you are as a researcher, who you are as a student. Um, counseling programs want to know who you are as a person. Um, it's really important that they know who you are as a person. And so what you want to sort of go for in those sorts of statements is demonstrating that you can feel empathy for other people and that you can express that empathy for other people. Um, that's very, very important, right? So um, yeah, and I would definitely reach out to Dr. Jordan and see kind of what she would be looking for. Um, I think couple and family therapy is probably a program where you can go either way. 
I think it would also in part depend on what your work experience was. You know, if you have work experience, like just working with like, even working with the public, just somebody that can speak to like your ability to get along well with people from different backgrounds, with people from, um, you know, who have different belief systems and you, things like that, right? Because, you know, as a, um, as a therapist, my, um, my fiance's mother is, is, a, um, is a couple and family therapist. Um, and she deals with all kinds of different folks, um, some of whom are very similar to her and others of whom are radically different. Um, so I think, you know, if you have somebody that can sort of say, hey, this person does really well with lots of different kinds of people, that may be really helpful. All right, thank you so much. Absolutely. Anyone else? <laughs> And also, um, while we wait for questions, um, and go ahead and you can we're gonna raise your hand, put them in the chat as usual. I was just gonna say, I do graduate school advising in our office too. And the answer to so many questions about grad school is it depends. <laughs> it depends on the program because every program is a little bit different. So make sure if you're interested in a, a specific program, make sure you're looking at their specific directions because there are the directions and the requirements for the school, then there's the directions and requirements for the program. And, you know, they're different. So um, go ahead, Anna. Hi again. So I have, so what's the difference between, like, I guess, like the environment between like undergrad and like grad school? Like, is it more hands on? Um, is it more book? Does that make sense? <laughs> No, it does. I know exactly what you're asking. It's a great question. I think grad school is a lot more fun than undergrad. Um, it's a lot more work. It really is. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you about that. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You, you are going to, uh, you're going to work like you've never worked. I mean, I would say take your toughest undergraduate course, multiply that workload by two, and that'll probably be your easiest grad course. Um, now that said, you're not taking as many courses though. You know, and here's the other end of it. You're doing something you're really interested in, right? So as undergraduates, you have bounced all over campus, right? You've taken courses in, in all kinds of different things because that's, you know, because that's what a, kind of a liberal arts education is, right? Where you sort of, you know, you get a little bit. So you take somebody like me, who's a big literature person, you know, and I'm taking chemistry and psychology and all these things. And they were all valuable to me. They're all valuable to me. OK, um, I, I actually have used geometry in my everyday life. Um, I once used use it to figure out, um, you know, how far the catcher has to throw the ball to second base when somebody's trying to steal second base of the baseball game. So it all it, it all counts. OK, but as a graduate student, you're not doing any of that. Right. You're only working in the area that you're interested in. So um, so, you know, there were no more math courses for me to take as uh, when, I was, uh, when I was doing my master's and my doctorate in English, right? It was just courses in what I was interested in. Um, I also think it's more fun because I feel like you kind of get to peek behind the curtain a little bit as a master's student. As a doctoral student, you get to go all the way behind the curtain. Um, but, um, but as a master's student, you definitely, get to, you, know, you definitely get to peek more of it. You get to work more closely with faculty as well, um, which is a really nice thing. You, know, you really get to know your faculty. Um, I mean, like I, I have lost track of the number of meals I have had with my dissertation director. Um, you know, when I was working on my dissertation, I can count on one hand the number of meals I had with faculty as an undergraduate student. And I went to a tiny school too, where like that, that happens sometimes. Um, so I would say that, um, and I would also say that you're much more on your own as a graduate student. It's a much more independent process. So nobody's gonna stand over you and, and sort of, you know, make you kind of, you know, do anything, right? Like um, you can do the work or not. Um, but I always kind of liked that independence. I was always the kind of person like, hey, just give me a task and like, leave me alone and let me do it. Um, independent on the program, the grading scales can be, well, not the scales, but the grading process can be different. So like some things, you know, depending on the program, you may have several quizzes and tests along the way. Um, I can tell you in English courses, um, you wrote one paper at the end of the semester, that was your grade, like for the whole class, you know, so, you know, so you just wrote like, you read like seven novels and then you, you picked, 
you picked one or two of the novels and you wrote, you know, you did some research and you, you, wrote, a, you wrote a 15 to 20 page paper about it. And, you know, if you wrote well, you got an A <laughs> in the class and that was it, right? There was no, no quizzes along the way. There's no exams. Um, the other thing I would say too is for something like the kind of program that you're looking at, right? You, you'll also be preparing along the way for like a, a licensure requirement at the end, right? So you won't necessarily be licensed when you graduate, but you'll be well, well set up like to take those exams. So, um, so yeah, it really, I mean, like Zach said earlier, right? It, it does depend a little bit on the program, right? That's always the answer with grad school. But I would say I had a lot more fun as a graduate student. I found it incredibly challenging intellectually, um, but also stimulating intellectually. It was stuff I was really interested in. Um, I liked that I got to pick a lot of what I wanted to do um, I like that a lot, being able to pick what I want to do. So yeah, I don't know if that answered your question exactly or not, Anna, but yeah, um, that, was, that was really honest. I liked it. Um, yeah, and then I think my, <laughs> this is like the last thing. Mm -hmm. So like, um, can I do like an internship while I'm in the master's program or Sure. Well, I know, I know for say for, for different types of programs, they're, they're required in some cases. So for example, if you did couple and family therapy, um, that you'll be seeing clients by the end of your time there, okay. you know, like in that. So um, like, you know, social work does something similar. Um, a lot of our business school programs have internships. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There'll be some, some aspect of that, um, especially those of you looking at public facing programs, right? Programs that are sort of preparing you for work that you'll do, um, you know, in the public, like, you know, at law school, um, you know, they have like the law review and the, the legal clinics and things like that. So, um, you know, we have, we have things like that here um, as well, sort of the deeper you get into the program. Um, social work has like practicum sites where you actually like leave campus and like, you know, you might go work at, you know, you might go work with, um, with uh, you know, um, Metro Police, you might go work at um, you know you might go work in one of, at the you know Clark County Jail. You might go work um, you might go work at one of the schools, things like that. So there's all kinds of different things. But yes, internships are often a big part of graduate school because you really are being prepared for um, for a career in a very specific way. Even Gabriella, looking at something like you know the PhD in English, I'm assuming you want to teach English. Is that right? Yes, I'm ultimately looking to fess it. Okay. Uh, and I would, I would potentially, I would potentially love to teach back where I originally was for my undergraduate, which would be Nevada State College. You know, so I'm, you know, I'm anticipating that. Sure, sure. So I mean, at the doctoral level, you know, that that, that graduate assistantship is essential there because you're getting that teaching experience, right? Um, so, so what I'm getting at is that just about any graduate program you're a part of um, is going to give you some of that professional development chances and some of those. So whether it's an, Anna, whether it's an internship, whether it's seeing patients sort of under somebody else's license, whether it's preparing for that licensure exam, whether it's teaching courses or being a research assistant or something like that, like, yeah, you're going to absolutely get the kinds of experiences that you're going to need to walk out there and get a job. And this is one of the great things about like being in Vegas, right? Is like Vegas is just growing like crazy. I mean, it's even, it's grown during the pandemic if that's even possible. I think we've got to be like the only place around that's done that, right? So like there are so many places that are expanding here and we are in such dire need of healthcare professionals here to keep up with this, right? So thinking about the counseling professions and things like that, Nevada State's a growing school, Gabriella. You know, y'all are, y'all are getting bigger all the time, right? It's an exciting place to be a part of. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think you're really, you'd be really well positioned, you know, and it's, um, and I, I, I can say all that. I don't have to worry about poaching students from Nevada State because you all don't have any graduate programs yet. I feel like you probably will in the future. And, and then Zach won't invite me to come down as much um, because he'll be trying to recruit them into uh, the Nevada State programs. But there's, you know, and, and the other thing I want to say here really quick too, is that there are so many Nevada State students that come to grad school at UNLV and do so well and excel here. Um, so you all are gonna be so well prepared for grad school at UNLV coming out of Nevada State. Um, and again, you know, we're just up the road a little bit.
Any other questions here? Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Zach Scott. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. I'll go ahead and read it to you. Um, I have a few questions about auditing a class. What's the process like? And do I have to be enrolled at UNLV? Do I get to choose how long I stay in the class? I also heard that an audit class can count towards our degree if we complete it. Is that correct? Okay, so there's a lot of different questions there. Um, let me start with the first one, which is, I believe you do have to be enrolled at UNLV. It may be possible to get permission to take grad courses here. Um, I know that's possible for UNLV undergrads. I know that everything's in she, so it might still sync up, but you, um, if you really wanted to do that while you were an undergrad at, at NSC, you'd have to email me and I'd have to find out who the right person to talk to would be. Um, it is possible though to audit a course. Um, you don't necessarily have to be enrolled in a program. So if, if we're talking about after you graduate, talking about when you already have your bachelor's, you can apply as what's called the non-degree seeking student here. There's no financial aid available in those cases, but you, you, and you technically could audit a class, um, but you'd have to get the instructor's permission um, to audit. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot of people that audit classes much anymore. I think that used to be a thing kind of uh, earlier, like my, my folks would talk about doing that, or well, my, uh, my mother would mention doing it. My father was, was, uh, never went to college. He went to, the, uh, he went to the United States Army instead. Um, but that's enough about that. Um, do I get to choose how long I stay in the class? I mean, as long as the professor was cool with it, you can audit the whole way through. But I do know this, the tuition cost is the same, whether you audit it or, audit it or take it for credit. So I would take it for credit because you're gonna pay the same amount either way. Um, so if you do complete it, it can count towards your degree. So you can take up to 15 credits or a third of the degree, whichever is smaller. Um, no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong about that. That's transfer credit. Yeah, you can take up to 15 credits as a non-degree seeking student. And then, um, so let's say, just for the sake of argument, you were interested in the MBA program here at UNLV and you took three courses as a non-degree seeking student. So you had nine credits in that program and then you got admitted to the program. You could carry all of those credits into the program and then you would just have the remaining courses left. On the other hand, it can be really difficult in certain programs to take courses as a non-degree seeking student. So like couple and family therapy, which we've talked about, I think they have one or two classes you can take non-degree seeking. Um, English literature, I think you can take a couple of things non-degree seeking. Creative writing, you can take absolutely nothing. Um, like uh, clinical psychology, I don't think you can take anything there. You know, I know like physical therapy, occupational therapy, you cannot take anything as a non-degree seeking student. So it really depends on the program that you're interested in. Um, but I would say again, um, if you wanna sort of try to take grad courses as an undergrad, send me an email. I'll find out the right people to talk to and get you hooked up with them and see if that's possible. If you just want to do it afterwards, you'd have to get accepted as a non-degree seeking student. That's a $30 application fee. We turn your application around in like two or three days. It's really quick. Um, and uh, and then, but, but then I would always recommend people to say, hey, if you want to take courses as a non-degree seeking student, talk to that graduate coordinator first. Find out what, if anything, they'll let you take as a graduate, um, as a non-degree seeking graduate student. Because I don't want you to pay $30 and then find out you can't take anything that you want to take non-degree, right? So I know that's a really long-winded answer and a very long-winded way of saying it kind of depends, um, but, that, but that's the best answer I have. And I think we have time for maybe one, maybe two more questions if anybody has anything. Um, I was wondering, how long does it take to find out if you're accepted or not? Well, Jennifer, that's a great question. And, and again, I'll say the answer is it depends, but it, yeah, I can give you sort of a guideline for it. Um, and then I see the other question there in the chat um, and I'll get to that here in a second. So in terms of the programs, um, each program does this a little bit differently. Some programs do what we call rolling admissions. What that means is they take, they look at the applications as they come in and decide on them. That's, you know, our MBA program does that. They're pretty quick. It's about three weeks, you know, three weeks to a month. So it takes us about a week to go through your application. So you're probably looking at a month, four to six weeks in that case. Other programs wait until the, until the deadline. So generally speaking, if it's an early deadline, 
they're going to wait until they have all the applications in, right? So like English is a fairly early deadline. It's January 15th. Um, I used to process applications for them. So I know that on January 16th, they just start looking at applications. Um, so there's no real advantage in a program like that to, um, to submit early. Like our physical therapy program, their applications are due tomorrow. They'll get probably 450 or 500 applications. They're not even going to start looking until tomorrow. So that process is going to take a while. Um, but Je Jennifer, do you know which program you're interested in? I can maybe give you a little bit better or clearer answer. Yeah, I'm interested in the MSW program. Master in Social Work. They have different deadlines, right? So they have a, a priority deadline. They have, uh, I'm sorry, they have an early decision deadline, a priority deadline, and a final deadline. So um, they are, I think, pretty quick depending, if you get for that early decision or that priority deadline, they're pretty quick. Otherwise, I think they roll the rest of the way through. Have you talked with Dr. Bergquist at all? No, I haven't. Okay, let me put her information here in the chat. And then Cassandra, I promise we'll get to yours. Um, so um, she regularly hosts online information sessions for the social work program. Um, she does them through Zoom, so uh, they're sort of by invitation only, but I'm going to send you her, email, her name and email address here in the chat, um, and this is true for anybody interested in social work. If you reach out to her and tell her that you're interested in the program and you'd like to attend one of those info sessions, she'll send you um, the link to it, and she can also tell you a little bit more about how long it generally takes for them to respond to an application. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then Cassandra, I see your question is, um, can you pursue two master's programs at the same time if the classes overlap, is it permitted? The answer to that is maybe. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that you might try that. We do have certain dual degree programs, right? So for example, we have a dual degree MBA in hotel administration, dual degree MBA in dental medicine, actually. Um, most dental practices that fail don't fail because of the quality of dentistry. They fail because the, the dentist can't run the business end of it. So anyway, there's lots of dual degree programs. Um, there's, you know, the MIS and MBA, um, there's all kinds of things. So in that case, you're applying to two separate programs, but on the dual degree track, they both have to let you in to be admitted to the dual degree. However, if one of them says yes, and one of them says no, you can still do the one that says yes. Okay. It is also possible to be concurrently enrolled into master's programs. Um, but you need permission from both programs to do that. Also, um, the classes only count for one of the degrees, right? So you can't sort of like double dip on the classes, right? So even in the dual degree programs, it's like X number of classes for the MBA and X number, I think like the MBA MIS, I think it's 54 total credits. And I think it's 30 credits are MBA, 24 credits are MIS. And they kind of tell you, you know, what you're, what you're taking and what counts for what there. Um, so, yeah, so that's sort of a, uh, again, I know all these answers are long winded, but I'm, A, I can't help it. And B, um, I'm, um, I'm just trying to sort of give you all as complete information as I can. So um, the answer to that is maybe. Um, anybody else? I'm actually going to have another pro staff come in and just host just in case it goes over because I do have something at four, but I wanted, I didn't want to cut it short. So um, if anybody has anything else, Take your time, <laughs> but let me know, Dave, if you got to get going too. I can stay for another couple of minutes if anybody has any questions, and if not, that's okay too. And you can always let me put the email address in the chat here one last time, um, and you can always reach out. Like I said, if you want to talk to me, put my name in the chat, and if you want to talk to anybody but me, just say that. Just be like anybody but Dave, okay? And I promise they won't rat you out. I promise. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, well, if we don't, if I don't, I don't want to cut it off either, but if we don't have any other questions. Last call, everyone. <laughs> Give it a minute or two, and then, yeah. But thank you so much, Dave. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for asking so many questions. This is so exciting how engaged everybody's been. This is awesome. You all have so. had, had great questions. This has been fantastic. I'm, I'm really excited, and I hope that you'll all join yeah. us as our newest grad rebels. Yes, please. I see a lot of <laughs> thumbs up and nods, that's awesome. We'll take that, we'll take that. Well, thanks so much for having me. I really, really appreciate really? it. Um, it's great to be here and hopefully we'll be able to get some of our folks down to your campus maybe next semester. 
Um, yes. but in the meantime, reach out with any questions, okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dave, and thank you everybody for attending, and please enjoy the rest of your days.